Welcome back, disc golf fans. We are here for the 2024 United States Women's Disc Golf Championships presented by Mint Discs. We're still in the Austin, Texas area here. Excited to be here and able to call the coverage for you guys. I'm Nathan Queen, joined by Rebecca Cox. Hi, everyone. How do you how are you feeling being out here in Austin still? I feel good. It's nice to sit still for a week and play our first major of the year kind of early but why not yeah and on our card today for fp40 we have jennifer allen stephanie vincent ellen widboom and jenny umstead yeah these women have been in the disc golf scene for a while now so it's nice to see them all together i believe this is widboom's first time in the fp40 division yeah first major fp40 that's got to uh, be a different feeling for yeah. ellen straight into hole one at Sprinkle Valley Disc Golf Course. Pretty new course, I think just established in 2023. 653-foot par four. Got a triple mando to start. You want to go pretty straight and make sure you don't right, fade too far. All right, we're live on the box from the 2024 United States Women's Disc Golf Championships. First on the box, representing Innova Champion Disc, Zuka and Grip. From Gilbert, Arizona, please welcome Jennifer Allen. Jennifer Allen, your 2022 and 2023 FP40 champion at this tournament. Yeah, who better to tee first than previous champion? Pretty well known for her big distance shots. And From a Austin, bit too Texas. much distance on that <laughs> one. Big skip off to the left. Lucky ace disc. Please welcome. Stephanie Vincent. Stephanie Vincent. This is her seventh time playing this event. Her first time being in 2011 in Round Rock, Texas. And a local to here, so didn't have to travel real far to get here this weekend. Gets a nice bounce out from Ronnie the left Brooksville, side. Brooksville, Florida, representing Innova Champion Disc and Sun King. Please welcome Ellen Whitboom. Next, we have Ellen Whitboom representing Innova. This will be her fifth time playing the U.S. Women's event, but her first time in the FP40 division. And rounding out our card from Santa Cruz, California. A little bit on the left MF side there. Rip OTB. Please welcome Jenny Umstead. Jenny Umstead last to tee for our FP40 card. All of them through the gap. This one also looking to leak a little bit left side. It leaks a lot of it though, able to get down there pretty well. Yeah, hole one is the definition of placement shot. You really just want to keep yourself in the fairway as much as possible. And it seems like Stephanie knew that there. Didn't get too aggressive trying to reach the basket. And now what we're more used to seeing from Ellen is that sidearm. She's able to get up there nicely after we saw a backhand <laughs> off the tee. Ooh. Jenny a little pinched off in there, but she managed to find a line. When you said go disc, I was like... Very spicy line through the woods. It looks like we finally reached Jen's disc way back a little bit too far in the woods and not quite able to, to hit that line to get out there. Yeah, it's kind of jail on the left side of that fairway. And a great third shot. Leaking a little bit long. The ground play out here was interesting to watch yesterday. Uh, those big wood chips, you kind of think you're going to check up a lot, kind of like right there. Um, but it's a little wet as well, so it seemed to be playing faster than expected. Yeah, even walking across these, you're slipping here and there. Whip booms birdie bid. Doesn't quite have the pop on the putt early there. Easy to happen on the first hole. Oh, 
almost able to come back and save the par there, but just a bit low. Yeah, I know. I would be happy with the par on this hole just to start out. Great putt from Stephanie. Yeah, secures that par. I think that's going to go back to that second shot where she didn't get too aggressive, trying to reach the basket, was able to put herself in place. Wood boom with a solid putt for par. A couple pars and a couple bogeys here. Oh, excuse me. Three pars and a bogey here on hole one. <laughs> uh, with the tightness of this track, that might be a set of scores we're used to seeing now. Yeah. In hole two, we have another par four, 516 feet. A little bit of a dog leg to the right. Um, it seems like a pretty friendly lefty course, to be honest the shape of a lot of these holes you really just want to get through the gap here and like we said before the placement shot is essential yeah it does seem like a lot of these fairways do shape that left to right that do that do favor the lefty or sidearm uh, but most of them have enough room you can bend a backhand it's just definitely more technical I'm surprised to see Woodboom go backhand here <laughs> yeah abs me too it works out pretty well, mm -hmm. stays in the fairway, uh, went for straight, didn't really try to get too far right. Jenny going for the big turnover shot, but gets a little too straight. And that's really the danger here. If you do hit that gap, going too straight is super easy and it's just, it's Texas golf. So anything off the fairway is just kind of jail. Turn, putter, turn, putter, turn. Yeah, all players trying to go for that turnover shot. Jen also not quite getting that right enough. Stephanie trickled out into a pretty good spot here. It's a little pinched off. Yeah, again, looks like she's just going to be going for some placement. Starting to drift a little bit left, but does stay on the fairway. Should be in good position to get up and down. Jen has a couple windows here of opportunity. Oh, and it just leaks out a little early. Yeah, still trying to get some big distance with that standstill power that she has. Gonna have to go to a stretch out forehand now and in danger of bogey here now. Still well outside circle two looking at a par. We'd be kind of going for that right side gap. I think she'll have a step out right there. And like you said, Texas golf. If you're just barely <laughs> off the fairway, you don't have much room to move. Yeah. Because Jenny doesn't make it too far there after the longest tee shot. Yeah, luckily the mulch kind of prevents the cut rolls. a nice little upshot there from Jen. <laughs> Jennifer, I should say. She's got all kinds of names, I think. It's too early for this much stress. Depends on who you ask. Yeah. But Jenny leaves that one a little bit short. Going to be looking at a long par look. As Stephanie now trying to get up and down for her par. Also going to leave a tester just outside circle one. I did not realize what even went that deep. She doesn't mind. Able to punch that <laughs> forehand through there. She will have her par. Oh, Stephanie's par putt just... Tickles the left side chains. These baskets don't really like the, the side chains hits very much. No, it got to be pretty center on these. You'll see them push to the right or the left pretty quickly. Well, and now 
off or another bogey. She'll be looking for a par or a birdie here quickly. Oh, yeah. Plenty of opportunities to make up some strokes. How do you feel starting your round off with two par fours? I like par fours, honestly. Wooded par fours are just a lot of fun. Um, you know, even if you make a little bit of a mistake on one shot, you can still make it up. But the Texas golf makes it a little harder, for sure. But, I mean, I like par fours. Wood boom getting the only par. Yeah, now that we've played two wooded par fours, we're going to stay in the woods, but our first par three, 300 feet, slight move to the left. There's a tree right here on the tee that makes this release angle kind of funny. Yeah, you got to stick to the very, very right side of this tee pad to throw that hyzer shot. Boom boom keeps it a little low. You really want to get the height off the tee here. Yeah, I think without that tree that both of them almost touched in the middle, you'd throw pretty flat on this shot and let it fade, mm -hmm. uh, but makes you throw kind of a hyzer flip here. Stephanie's got the right idea here, throwing something straight, letting it fade. Ooh! Flashing some <laughs> chains, almost connecting. I bet you they don't know it was that close. And Jenny leaving it a little wide, easy to do if you're using any more of the tee pad than just that right side of it. A nice recovery shot around the corner, going to put herself inside circle one looking for the par. Ellen might give this a little bid. Get it, get it, get it. Ooh, she tried. Yeah, giving it that float. Maybe the wind will pick it up and go in, but <laughs> leaves herself pretty close for par. Jen with a little bit of a blocked off circle two look there. So just a little timid on the putt, maybe a little soft off to the right. And our first birdie on the card, Stephanie Vincent able to bounce back after the bogey on hole two. Nice birdie. Wood boom tapping in, another par. I like the one foot putt there. Yeah. <laughs> I think 15 feet or so, I, I might be on one foot also. Jen getting her first par of the round. Hole four, par three, 360 feet. As you can see, we have a pretty tight uh, line here in the fairway through the woods. Once again, it is uphill as well. Yeah, I'd say toughest par three on the course. Yeah, definitely if you're trying to be aggressive. Maybe toughest birdie on the course besides hole 18, uh, but definitely a difficult Difficult hole here. Uh, par would be great. And Ellen three for three with, or excuse me, four for four with backhands <laughs> off the tee and well executed there. Long look for birdie. Jen, probably being the one woman who can definitely reach this hole, kind of just leaves it on the left side. And that's kind of the mistake you want to make if you're going to be on either side of the fairway. It should be the left. 
but she's going to be center. Gets a nice kick. Yeah. Be right there around where Widboom's at. That looked good out of Jenny's hand, but just kind of kept turning. Ooh, powerful shot out of the woods there from Stephanie. Great scramble. A little bit of tricky tree <laughs> trouble here with Jenny able to stretch around it. Does leave that up shot a little bit short, though. Going to have to try to get that putt going. And Ellen has landed on the bridge here. Probably not something you expect to happen. Yeah. Good shot there from Ellen. The bridges can be a little bit slick when they're wet, too, so that was good footwork. I think Jen was giving, trying to give that a long bid there, but just turned it over a little bit. And not wanting to compound mistakes on the hole. Jenny going to accept the bogey on that one. As Jennifer Allen able to, to connect on a big par putt there. Yeah, good par save there. And Stephanie with the par. Like we said, this is a good hole for par. And the dreaded buzzard from Jenny with three bogeys in a row. Is that what it's called? That's what I call it. Okay. <laughs> Wood boom, keeping it clean. Yeah, clean is great. Four pars. Moving into hole five. 450 foot par four. You've got OB all the way down the right side. Then two thirds are a little bit more down the fairway. You've got an OB creek crossing. You'll have to carry on your second shot. Shouldn't really come into play off the tee. You got two gaps here. Uh, I think we'll likely see four, all four players go to the left side. This is trouble with that kick, but does stay in bounds just barely. Yeah, here's a forehand off the tee. There you go, wood boom. Yeah, getting at the end of that tunnel is a great shot. Yeah, she carried all the way down the left side, staying away from those trees. Oh, Jennifer might be taking my gap here. Nope. Dang it. Oh, big turnover and just catches that last tree leaning mm -hmm. to the left. We'll see what type of stance she ends up with over there. Jenny hitting that left side gap, but it looks like it just skips... A little deep into the woods there. So this actually isn't a bad spot since she didn't kick OB. She'll be able to try to get aggressive. This needs to carry. Whew. And just <laughs> makes it with a nice skip over that creek. Yeah, so she'll have a long, long look for Bertie. Oh, Jen trying to bite off a piece of the fairway there, but catching a tree. Jenny looking like she's in a similar spot. Jen's hanging out on the left side over there. Sit down. My goodness. Ooh. There we go. Yeah. I like seeing the forehand roller out here. Not a lot of ground play because of all the wood chips, but. Another standstill from Jen Allen, able to connect on that one nicely she's going to be inside circle one looking to get that par and wood boom after that clean drive with a clean backhand here on the second shot a little bit of a rude tree kick there but still should be inside circle one bit of a straddle type of putt over there get around the trees Good standstill backhand from Jenny with that tree right in her backswing. A 
Long look for birdie there. You don't want to go too long and end up in those trees. I know I'm not the best forehander, but when I'm that close to the basket, it just makes me nervous to pull out that forehand. <laughs> well, sometimes it's all you got. Wood boom, finally connecting the birdie. All right, we've got our first player under par for the round. Jen looking to get her par here. Yeah, starting to feel good there. Now three pars. Good to see her bounce back after the slower start. A pretty challenging par four for being 450 feet. Mm -hmm. Nice putt there from Steph. Hole six, 306 feet, par three. It's pretty uphill right off the tee. Um, the only, you can't even see the basket from the tee pad. Um, and those trees in the middle of the fairway are really the ones that you're either trying to go to the right or left side of. Looks like Woodboom is taking the left side. Oh, let's go. And the right side. And the right <laughs> side. <laughs> Gets up there, likely for a par from that area. Uh, yeah. But small chance to toss it in a little bit low there from Stephanie also likely in a par area no, get off. Jen getting the height hitting her line getting right up to the edge of the circle there just outside maybe for her birdie yeah Jenny trying to follow that line, but just a little bit too much turn on it. Going to end up with another tricky kind of shot. It does look like she has room for a hyzer here, though. He's a little bit wide. Oh, yeah. Good job. Stephanie, very controlled upshot, able to put it inside the bullseye. My favorite spot for a par. <laughs> Ooh. Boom, looking like she's trying to give it another long bid. Yeah, I like her control on those long bids, able to still keep it close to the basket, but also make it seem like it's going to have a chance. Jenny just laying up there. Jennifer Allen for her first birdie of the round. Mm. Strong effort. Had all the want in it. Going to have a little bit of a comebacker here. And a good par putt. Yeah, if it's anything, you know it's going to be committed. We see the umbrella there. Had a bit of a threat of rain early on in the week that kind of dwindled. Still a chance in the mornings, but then it was just kind of misty all day. Yeah. Not quite raining. Just kind of wet air. But luckily I don't believe they needed to pull out their umbrellas too much. If at all. Stephanie here with the easy par. You're up next. Stay turning. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Ooh. Wow. 
Allen so that's inbounds. What, that's exactly. She, I mean, Unbelievable. Moving into hole seven, another par four, 640 feet, some options off of the tee, but we will likely see the, the route that the drone flew there. Once you get a good tee shot, you still have a very difficult second shot as this basket is tucked up to the left and quite a bit uphill as well. All right. Oh. Ellen trying to get real tricky here with the forehand roller <laughs> down the left side. Pretty early left, though. Yeah, it's going to be pretty pinched off on the left side over there. Stephanie taking the right side. Yeah, that's great. You really just want to hit that line, and I mean, it almost doesn't matter where you land as long as you, as long as you hit that gap. Definitely happy with the early gap hit here. You'll deal with whatever comes with after that. Yeah. As Jen Allen has tons of speed on this. Just catches the last tree, but still going to be happy she hit that original gap. Jenny also hitting that gap. Hopefully not skipping too far left. Looks like she's got some trees to contend with here. But does a great job of getting through them. Oh, yeah. Wow. Very nice second shot, almost reaching the card in front of him <laughs> up there. As we do see Ellen pretty far over there left, going with the forehand roller and, and looked good, just never got that left turn. <sighs> Stephanie with a smooth shot here, just catching those long trees a little bit. Tough to execute this shot. That tree in the middle, you just got to miss it and then hope you get something good. Pretty good size skip there. I believe she's made it into circle two. We're right around the edge of it. Would boom just pitching out to the fairway. Yeah, so. Needs to get up and down to the basket to get a single bogey. This looks like a good shot. Needs to go move left, but yeah. circle's edge or so. Yeah, maybe even a little inside the circle on the right there. Stephanie's third shot. Looking to just put it next to the basket. She's very good at those controlled shots, leaving it a little bit short. But not really. And Jenny, with a great second shot, is able to get up and down. Should have a pretty close putt for par there. And probably not many birdie opportunities on this one. Looks like Jennifer Allen may have taken that into account to make <laughs> sure she gets her par. Oh, Woodboom leaving a little right there. Yeah, frustrating. Yeah, she had to do a lot of work to get there. That's one of the putts you feel like you need to make. Yeah, and she's in a bunch of stuff right there, too. I mean, there's thorns, there's all kinds of stuff. Oh, yeah, you saw her grimacing on the way out. Yeah. Looks like something might have grabbed her. Great par from Stephanie. Obviously, she knows this course well. She knows... She's very good at the placement shots, or if she's out of position, she knows how to just keep it in the fairway and move on. And I know that par is going to feel good for Jenny. Oh, yeah. Trying to get back on track a little bit. we got three pars here, and Ellen with a bit of a tough hole. But still hanging right in there with the card. Hole 8, 300 feet, par 3. Probably the tightest hole that we have here in the woods. The basket's off to the right. Um, if you have 
a good forehand shot. That's really probably the best play here, but the backhand with a putter is also an option. It definitely pulls that one a bit to the right. Yeah, the downhill on this hole is what really makes that backhand putter or mid-range difficult to drift to the right. Oh. As you see, that one's still wanting to finish left. Fantastic shot. Yeah. Absolutely nailed that shot. <laughs> yeah, that's what you're playing for with the backhand, mm -hmm. is try to land around circle's edge left side. She does that nicely in this yeah. inside circle. Jenny going with the forehand. It almost looks like it was going to turn over into the fairway, but trickles right into that right side. Ellen going to go with that forehand as well. Does keep it a little bit lower. Oh. Just catches that tree on the right side, mm -hmm. though. Might be in a difficult position now. Yeah, she's got to keep this forehand high and just let it drift into the basket. Yeah, and a little bit too high. Going to catch some of that Texas cabbage up there. As you said, Stephanie Vincent knows the touch. Yeah. Nice floaty backhand to just bullseye for par. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nothing wrong with pars out here. Yeah, as Jenny's too pinched off to even attack, she's going to have to pitch out and pitch up. Long par look. <clears throat> looked good on camera, but Ellen knew immediately. Yeah. And we finally reached Jennifer Allen's drive. Still looking for that first birdie of the round. Go ahead and count it. Very nice, very nice. Rough couple holes for Ellen there. You see her trying to collect herself. Mm -hmm. That can be a big part of the battle out here during one of these rounds. Yeah, it's still too early to get upset, even though it's easy to do sometimes. Yeah, especially on a tight wooded course like this, you can get yourself feeling better. And then just one little kick and you're right back at it. <laughs> mm-hmm moves us into hole nine 470 foot par four dog leg left you really want to push past this tree that the drone is flying in front of to have the best line to attack this basket all uphill once you make that turn to the left again a difficult hole for 470 feet um i think you need maybe 280 off the tee but plays a bit farther yeah you're throwing uphill you have to hit that gap Jen getting caught up on the right side there. This looks like a nice shot from Stephanie. Makes it around that corner. Yeah, even with a great shot like that, it might not be pushed forward enough to get that good second gap. I didn't even see that tree. Yeah, I thought that was going to be in a similar spot to Stephanie, but yeah. it ends up kicking back down early. Oh, yeah. <laughs> As Widboom stretches that disc around that tree, also could be in a funny spot, you know? Yeah. I know that sounds weird when she just landed right in the middle of the fairway, but... We'll see what they have as Jenny is right on that tree that might be in these other players' way. Oh, and I, yeah, that looks like Jen's disc. Nice camera work. <laughs> yeah, another thing to think about when you're playing a course like this is sometimes you get close to these trees and you definitely don't want to hurt yourself 
hitting it or so swinging your arm out just to make sure is a very smart thing to do and great control there as you see her tucking her hand back yeah. might have touched that tree but didn't smack it that's a great second shot yeah to get herself in a position to try to par as Widboom did make it far enough for that good line able to hit the line fades out just a little bit early but inside circle two yeah she'll have a long birdie look I'm sure she'll give it a bid yeah, and Stephanie not quite far enough to have the open gap look, trying to pitch up with the forehand, <laughs> just turning it over too much. Yeah, I don't think we've seen that forehand too much from her so far. So likely she would have preferred to be a bit farther and been able to throw a backhand. Yeah, definitely. Jenny with a pretty solid forehand look. A little bit low, but that's the easy mistake to make here. Yeah, this uphill, they did cut a lot of the higher branches and things to make sure you have a little bit of room to get up there. Uh, but still kind of a low ceiling, especially with these logs going across the fairway that are going to stop you from getting any type of skip a lot of the time. Yeah, I mean, the mulch isn't going to let you skip, but those logs are definitely barriers as well. Long look for birdie here. This would be a great bounce back. <laughs> Come on, with boom. Oh, oh just yeah. the right side. Yeah, I had the height. Nice bid. <laughs> Stephanie with another par. Yeah, maintaining that <laughs> par streak. One bogey, one birdie on the front. Uh, pretty clean looking there for Stephanie. And would boom with that flamingo putt. So three pars here on the ninth before a bit of a walk around the brewery that we have here. Pretty neat little venue that we're at. Oh yeah, it's great. Dog park, food truck. Yeah, lots of stuff going on out here. As Stephanie Vincent gonna lead the way on our feature card of FP40 here. Then even Jennifer Allen one over, Ellen not far behind, and Jenny looking to make a bounce back on this back nine. As you see Shannon Mullen and Danielle Vargas looking to make a push to try to make that lead card tomorrow. Oh yeah. Enjoyed calling this round for you guys out here at the United States Women's Disc Golf Championship. Thank you all for tuning in. For Rebecca Cox, I'm Nathan Queen. We'll see you guys out there.